there are an increasing number of stories in our newspapers about feuds over wills. Disputes of these nature strike at the very heart of a family and can have long-lasting and devastating effects. The financial consequences are often catastrophic. I'm here with Laith Khatib, a solicitor who specialises in contentious wills, probate and trusts. So Leif, first of all, are you seeing an increase in these disputes? Yes, Wendy, and there is absolutely no sign at all of it slowing down. And what has caused the increase, in your opinion? I think it's a number of things. People are generally wealthier now because many people own property and property prices are much higher than they used to be. Consequently, when people die, there's more available to fight over. I also think the internet is a huge factor because people are much better informed now than they ever were in the past. They're able to research things on the internet and uh, consequently they're more aware of possible courses of action for them. So Leif, are there any other issues? Yes Wendy, I think so. The family dynamic is more complicated than it has been uh, in the past for many people and there are more mouths to feed so to speak. I've certainly dealt with a number of cases where stepchildren or children from a first marriage, for example, have felt unhappy about a will and have wished to challenge it. OK, that's very interesting. What types of claim may actually arise following someone's death? If there's a will, the starting point should be, is it valid? There are technical claims that can be investigated. For example, has the will been properly executed in accordance with the law, that is, in front of two witnesses? It may also be that the document is a forgery, so we could properly assess whether it is authentic or not. There are some other technical requirements for wills that we can always investigate to establish whether it is in fact a legitimate will. It may even be that the deceased lacked capacity at the time the will was made. There is a very strict legal test for someone to satisfy in order to be competent enough to make a will. That test is in fact different to a test that someone would have to satisfy to make something like a power of attorney, which many people regard as being quite similar to a will. So I guess if there is any doubt about someone's capacity, there is a possibility to challenge the will on that ground as well. So if the person is competent, are there other things you can look at? Yes, Wendy, of course there are. Other possibilities include a claim that a will was the product of an undue influence. So that is perhaps where someone is made to sign a will against their wishes, the gun to the head type scenario that um, people may be able to imagine. Another possibility, of course, is that someone has signed a will that they haven't properly approved. Uh, that could arise in circumstances where someone says, you know, sign this document, mum or dad, don't worry about reading it, and someone trusts that and signs it without knowing what's in there. So those throw up possibilities to challenge the validity of a will. If someone has exhausted all these possibilities and the will is valid, can it still be challenged? For some people it can be. The little known Inheritance Provision for Family Independence Act 1975 provides that certain people can challenge a will that is perfectly valid on the grounds that it's simply not fair and doesn't make enough provision for them. When presented with one of those claims, a court will have regard to certain factors that are set out within the Inheritance Act to determine whether fair provision has been made. And if the court determines that it hasn't been made, then the court can alter the terms of the will to ensure fairness prevails. It seems to me like there are a lot of potential problems. Are there any particular types of case you see a lot of? We deal with a whole range of cases in this field, but in particular, I suppose we do handle a lot of cases under the Inheritance Act that I mentioned earlier. I did in fact deal with an interesting case recently that involved an allegation of fraudulent calumny. That is where someone poisons the mind of the person making the will. So, for example, if the person making the will based their decision on the substance of the lie, then that can be challenged. Well, Leif, that all seems very complicated. It is, Wendy, and there are numerous other complications that I haven't mentioned. It really can be a minefield for people at what is already a very difficult time. What would you say to someone who thinks that they may have a claim or is on the receiving end of one? They really need to seek specialist legal advice as soon as possible. 
this is a complicated area of law and is not something that should be navigated by someone alone. Getting proper help and advice is the best chance someone has of obtaining a positive outcome. Some people will watch this and worry about the types of claims that may arise on their death. What advice would you give them? They should have a proper discussion about their concerns with a solicitor when they have their will prepared. It is possible to prevent or at least reduce post-death problems by getting your will right in the first place. Thank you Leif for some very good advice when making a will. So if you need any legal advice or help please contact us or visit our website on www.houselegal.co.uk